Folks, tonight let's look a little bit at the color grading that is now available in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2015, not 2014, and I'm just going to jump right in. I have a bunch of Parkway highlights that I shot a couple weeks ago, and this is with some mountain laurel rhododendron, some sort of um, pretty wildflower type bush up on the parkway. And I'm in the, um, I guess I'm in editing right now, or I'm actually in effects, aren't I? Okay, let's go to color. See the little thing up here that goes to color? And you automatic, automatically start seeing some of these uh, Lumetri or Lumetri, however you want to say that. I'm not sure how they say it. Scopes here that you can look at. Um, this is all sort of new over here. So there are, you know, in the past when I would go and do some color grading on a, I, I would go and I would actually look into the effects over here. And I used to go and do three-way color corrector or fast color corrector or brightness contrast. I'm going to experiment a little bit tonight. So we're going to be learning together on this. Uh, so we're going to suspend reality a little bit. Let's go ahead and do a little saturation on this. I can already tell it looks like this clip needs to be saturated a little bit. Um, just looking at it, basic correction creative. Let's see what else we got here. Now, you actually have looks. Right now we have no look, but they give you all these cool looks. Now these are just, let's just segue through a few of these day for night type things. Uh, blue eyes. These are all blues. Let's see if we can find something. Let's, we might as well just look at a little bit of what these are. Uh, blue moon. So you're seeing over here what's happening. It's uh, big time affecting the scope. Gold heat. Uh, so there's all kinds of new looks here. Gold sport. And none of these really make me very happy. I'm going to go back to uh, none for now because what I really want to do here is honestly uh, saturate this just a little bit and then probably um, brightness contrast. So I am going to go back over here for a minute. I'm going to type in brightness contrast. I'm going to put it on this clip that I'm working on. And let's do look at the uh, effect for a minute there, this brightness contrast. So I've got the Lumetri color going. But I think what this needs more than anything right off the bat is just to be darkened a little bit. And usually when I darken, or I, sometimes I'll, I'll still go ahead and affect the uh, contrast a little. I don't want to lose all my highlights there. But you see what I want. I want to bring this kind of more into a, if I turn these things off, I turn the color off. Then I see I lose some vibrance there. If I turn this off, then I get really washed out because it white balance too much. But there we go. That looks pretty kind of exotic and cool, doesn't it? I'm going to go back to color for a minute. And let's see if we squoze everything we want. Let's look at vibrance here for a minute. So vibrance will add a little bit of it. This is faded film look. I don't want to do that. No, I don't like that. Not for this kind of thing anyway. Vignette. Yeah, possibly we could do some vignetting here. It looks like we have the vignette amount here we can do. Look at this. So we can like bring it in darker. Now that lot kind of like that midpoint. What does this do? Look at this. Ooh, you can really do a lot of... Uh, things there around us that's going to be how much or how round is it how much are we going to feather it a little bit of feather in there that's pretty good now all of a sudden i've kind of got something i pretty much like let's go back to the effects up here let's take a look at this this is what we've got for this clip i mean this, this little thing down here is aggravating i'm noticing a little bug in the audio i don't know why that's going on but anyway let's let's uh, fold these uh effects up by hitting these little arrows here these are what, what twirl them down if you're new to uh Premiere. So I'm going to turn hit the effects. I'm going to see that's without the effect and here's without the brightness. So we start with something that's kind of humdrum and just a little over bright. Uh, we're going to darken it a little bit. Then we're going to liven it up and we we'll put a little bit of uh, vignetting on it. So I kind of like that. Let's go over to this next clip that I have. So here's just a, a tower. And you know, once again, a little blah, a little grayish looking almost, isn't it? So let's do color on it right quick. Let's see what we get with this. Uh, I'm going to go back to basic correction here. So you see you've got temperature exposure. Now here's where I could have gone in a while ago. I should have actually gone on the other one and done exposure. Now this one I think could be exposed maybe a... Uh-oh. 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 Uh -oh, uh -oh, edit. Undo. You see what I'm doing here? I'm on the wrong clip. i got to click on this one. Now we're going to do exposure a little... Maybe there we go about like that. Let's up our contrast. How do our highlights look? A little darker, maybe a little lighter. Shadows. I think we need we need a little more shadow here. What mind my whites pop just a little bit? What mind my blacks are a little darker? Now let's look back here at. Let's see what Creative does. 
Well, this is where we can do our vibrance and saturation again. I still like to saturate just a little. Don't want it to look over, uh, overkill, right? I don't want faded film or anything like that. And we've got curves if we want to mess with the curves. I don't see anything here that I really want to curve, though. And it's I like it that we've got all these different tint wheels. So we're going to mess with that here a little bit. I'll go back to basic correction look. This looks decent to me. So, yeah, I can see now I might not want to use brightness contrast. Let's assume a little bit of temperature. I know if I go back toward blue, it's going to get colder. Go back toward red. We've got just a little bit more warmth. Don't think I need to mess with the tint. So I'm going to say that that bit is pretty good there. What do you, what do you think about maybe doing a vignette on this one? Possibly, huh? A little bit, a little bit there. Doesn't have to be too much. Just gives it that little bit of drama, doesn't it? So I'm going to go back over here. Here is the next one. Now this is problematic. This is looking glass rock. And you can see I'm shooting it from a long way off and I'm zooming in. If you see some of the foreground, you see how it's nice and green there and that. And I don't want to totally mess this up. Uh, so what I might do, I might do a cut here. We'll do a, a C, a C key. I hit my, just hit, touch the C key on my, um, on my keyboard. I'm going to click right there. I might leave this, you know, I might have two different settings here for this. First of all, let's do a little basic color correct, correction on this one. I do think I'd like for the saturation to be a little more. I don't particularly want it to be blue, though. It's going to make it bluish. That looks a little better to me. Let's see. Let's let's uh, hit the shadows back just a little bit. That's looking pretty decent. I don't want to over contrast it. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Let's go and do the creative again here a second. Let's see now what can we do? What would vibrance do here a little bit? Shadow tint, highlight tint. I don't know that I want to mess with tints here. Now here's where color wheels, mid tones. How much uh, do I want to mess with mid tones here? Let's see, I went down a little bit with that. I think my highlights are pretty good as far as color goes. All right, let's look at the vignette on this one. I wouldn't mind having a bit of vignette on this. We'll do some up. Oh, it already has a little bit on it, doesn't it? Let's put our midpoint just a little, little closer in there like that. And I think the roundness and feather is pretty good. So see, now again, I think that's this is that may end up being a really excellent tool for me. So here's what I think I'm going to do on this. I'm going to go to Effects. And I'm going to click on the Lumetri. Uh, I just folded it up. But you see all the things I did are in there. If you want to change those things, you can go here and do all those various things we're looking at over here and the other thing right here inside of this. You don't have to open that that crazy uh, effects thing up here, but it kind of makes it neat. I like this new way of doing it. So I'm going to close this up. I'm going to, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit, click on this. I'm going to do a Control C, Control C to copy that effect. Now I'm just going to go over here to this one. I'm going to do a V. That's so I've got it on my pointer key again. So if I had it on C, so it was cut. So you see the little razor down here on a V makes it where it points. So, you know, I've got this that looks really dramatic and rich and not washed out. Then I go to this, which is very washed out. So I'm going to do a Control V now that I'm, I'm clicked on this one, Control V. And that will give me that same look on this one. Let's see if they match well. And see, this one. Might be a little dark. I mean, reason I, I, I might might need to not be quiet. So what's kind of cool? I've got ninety percent of my settings all right here, right? I might just go in and change exposure. So I'm going to click on uh, color again. And so with this one, I'm going to go back to basic correction. I think I'm going to maybe expose it just a little bit more. Okay. Now I don't want it to like really jump to see that big a difference there. So I'm going to cross dissolve this. I'm going to go here and do it on the effects. See, I'm going to type in C R O S S for cross dissolve and so I'm going to pull this cross dissolve over that and that means it'll kind of fade in as we go so watch these so there we go I'm a little lighter on this one see that hawk flying there I'll be prettier buzzard whatever that is here again we got another one another clip that's just a little uh, needs to just a little something doesn't it you know again maybe it's just a little overexposed I don't know uh, I do think again here if I go to this creative I do kind of like this saturation in creative and the fact that I have vibrance sharpen faded film I don't know that I like that curves could we affect a curve here now this is the overall curve and I don't know so you see what happens when you do curve just like it is in Photoshop right you can take this thing up higher or whatever and you can actually it's not terrible you can bring it back down here in one point and get your lower end a little bit more like this. Well, you see what I'm doing? I'm doing every bit of this. Now I automatically see I'm maybe a little oversaturated. 
So I'm going to go back to uh, creative again. I'm going to back that vibrance maybe down just a little, maybe that saturation down. So that looks pretty decent. So I'm going to stay with that for this clip. It looks pretty nice. And uh, I'm going to render this all out so you can see what it looks like. So I've got various different uh, views here. Here again is the same rock I did a while ago. And, you know, so I'm wondering, could I use again this look I had over here on this other one for that same clip? Let's just click on this again. Let's go to uh, effects. I'm sorry. Here we go. Let's get the lumetry or lumetry. However you want to say it. However you want to say it, folks. There's that darn pesky little weirdness going on over there with the audio. Let's go back to this one. Let's just click on it and do a Control-V again and see what it does. That's kind of neat. I might want this one to be just a little brighter, though. So this is what's really kind of cool is you just go back and forth uh, and you set your colors, uh, your effects that you want. I'm going to go back to basic create color correction again. Let's just expose that one just a little more. That's not bad. Contrast, a little more contrast maybe. Shadows, uh, I kind of like the shadows. Blacks, kind of like the blacks. That's pretty good. All right, so I'm not going to bore you with all this. I mean, we can keep on going, but you see how I'm... Uh, Kind of like to go to one where you have a lot of flowers or something. Here's and here's another good one. We've got very high contrast. I'd love to see some of the pinks in this flat these flowers. So maybe this one, we do a little bit of something something here, right? Maybe a little temperature or something. Um, the exposure is a little bright. But now look, if I back off on the exposure, I've, my shadows are just too much. So I'm gonna bring these shadows up a little bit, right? That's looking a little better. Blacks, just a little less on the blacks. Okay, and now, let's see. Let's go into, let's look at the color wheels here a second. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mid-tones, highlights. What if we move the highlights a little more toward pink? Just curious, what's going to happen here? Okay, now we're starting to get a little pinkish, aren't we? Okay, let's go back here to curves. Okay, are my curves a little too much? Uh, what does this need? This is a tough one. This is a tough one. Bring this down a little bit. Bring the bottom up a little bit so we don't lose everything in the shadows. We can rotate these wheels here a little. At least I think we can. Maybe you can't in this new version. We got a hue saturation curve. We used to be able to go in here and grab and rotate the wheels, but this one does not work that way. Let's go back to creative for a second. Let's look at our saturation again. We got, we're getting lots of, uh, of greens when we do that. And you know what? There just may not have been enough pink in this when I shot it to 100% affect that. Shadow tint, highlight tint. We could pull back the highlight tint a little bit more on the reds maybe. Now that's looking a little more like what I was seeing out there that day. And so that is kind of neat. Now, I may have over-affected everything we've got over here. I'm going to go to Vignette. I don't want to uh, make it look like I've just, you know, I'm, ooh, we've got this, let's pull it back this way. Midpoint, a little deeper in. And let's see, roundness, roundness, let's let it go a little. We want this to be, this to be the uh, highlight of what we're seeing here. So I kind of like that. It's a little different. Is it too much? It might be too much. Let's go back to uh, basic color correction again, and maybe we do not saturate so much. We go back to creative. You see what I'm doing here, folks, and maybe it's my curve that's causing the problem. Maybe I go back this way a little. And you know, I'm seeing everything just being high on the red. What if we take the reds back a little? Whoops, there we go. But if I, lose, if I do the reds, I'll lose my, my pinks. So I'm gonna stick with that. That's not terrible. I'm going to move forward to the next one. You know, this is kind of cool. It's not, I need nothing but a little bit of exposure, I'm thinking. Basic correction. I'm thinking maybe just a little less exposure. And, you know, maybe a little less shadow. Maybe. And just a tad more saturation. And I don't want to make the sky, like, too saturated, right? Highlights, I could just bump them up just a little. And, you know, again, the vignette. I'm kind of digging the vignette. That's kind of neat. Let's just leave that one like it is. How we got here? Oh, we got the color. This is this is in the shadows. And again, we got just a very delicate, almost whitish pink here. Um, and you know, basic correction again. Temperature is a little toward. It could be 
brightened up this way just a little, minute, a little bit warmer maybe. Uh, exposure maybe just a little bit less but shadows a little less shadow a little less black whites I'm okay with the whites are just a little bit darker actually saturation total saturation up and I'm digging the vignette again maybe we do a little bit more vignette here and our midpoint would be a little tighter in I like that okay and so what I'm going to do, folks, I'm going to do the same sort of thing for all this. Here again, this one, again, just a lot of times these where you're shooting things that are far away, uh, a lot of what helps is just to, to underexpose it uh, where it's being overexposed, do a little saturation, and just basically do some shadows and stuff here. Contrast sometimes really helps this. At, when you start doing this, you're going to lean more toward blue, so a lot of times I'll put a little bit of a, of other direction here. I'm not been messing with the tent because yet generally I never do anything good when I mess with tent. And you can see here that's not affecting anything well at all. I will go ahead and see uh, curves creative here. Vibrance, little vibrance, yeah, vibrance is not hurting it. And uh, shadow tent is very blue right now. Maybe I take the shadow tent maybe back more this direction so it's not so blue. Highlight tent is very whitish almost cyanish looking and you know I wouldn't mind if it goes just a little bit more toward true blue and so let's see uh, again saturation too much about like that right there vignette if we want to use it since I've been doing it so much with this one let's go ahead and do a little bit of vignette there so I'm not going to uh, bore you anymore this we've been going for a long time what I'm going to do I'm going to finish the rest of this out and then I'm going to post this video where you can see you've gotten an idea of how these effects work using the Lumetri color wheel you can once again go back here to effects on any of these yeah, I don't know why they're, this bug's got to be worked out I don't know why this is happening but um, you can go and and do the but the same things that you always could here I guess you could actually go over here and do uh, what Lumetri uh -oh, we need to go into I'm, I'm in uh, ah, we gotta go into uh, effects we're in effects aren't we Maybe you go back to editing. This is my old CS 5.5. Now, see, I like to use this old CS 5.5. It's just my old style of doing it. I know that now the new editing is this. So it looks like, oh, there, you can get effects still. So there's effects. So if you want to go in here and type in Lumetri, L-U-M-E. Is it Lumetri? Lumetri? I can't think. L-U-M-E, isn't it? M-I? L-U-M-E T. Yep, there it is. So there are, those are the presets. And I guess everything else is under this color thing now, right? But then when you go to effects, the effect itself is called Lumetri Color. So I guess uh, if I go in here, where is my effects now? I don't like the way this works sometimes. That's in the effects. Let's go into ed uh, editing. And there's effects, and if I type in Luma, T-R-I-C-O-L, then yeah, it's just a pull over. You can pull this over here late on something. You don't have to go up here and do this. But I swear, that's pretty dang cool, that right there. Just being able to go over here and have you a new little tab at the top where you can go, once again, this one, I bet I'm just going to go ahead and say, if I get my effect here and copy this, Control-C, you know, I'm copying this right here. I'm thinking this one's going to benefit from that very same look, and it does. It looks pretty cool. A little dark, so we might go back to our color. And for this particular one, we change our uh, exposure. Ah, too much, too much, too much. There we go. I like that. I like that. And actually, what I could have done maybe is just boosted my whites a little bit too. <coughs> Excuse me for the cough there, folks. So, we're going to render this out, and I'll give you a link to the finished version, which will only be about a four-minute video with some dramatic music. Peace to all who watch. Subscribe if you like. If you got any questions, or maybe you know a better way to manage this stuff, then just uh, give me your two cents worth. Thanks for watching, folks.